Come with me, toy fans. Hey toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome back as always to the Analog Toys YouTube channel. Now you'll notice uh, not too long ago I did a, an unboxing video where I was sent a very very kind donation of quite a large collection of Palatoy Action Force figures and vehicles um, from George Aitken, um, a guy who has since become a, a very good friend. Me and George were actually chatting only 15 minutes ago on, uh, on Facebook just discussing this, uh, this upcoming video. Now in that um, in that unboxing video, um, nearly every single item that George sent me was 100% complete, apart from the Red Shadows Hyena. Now this is a UK recolor of the G.I. Joe um, His Tank. Um, and when George sent this to me, it was missing a few parts, um, the, the gun from the turret and um, the clip that holds the gun in, in place was missing. Plus. The vehicle's pretty dirty, pretty messed up. Um, so I've since gone out and sourced the parts that I need. So we've got the guns and we've got the clip. Um, and I've also managed to find online um, a high quality photo of the original sticker sheet. Um, so I spent a little bit of time last night um, in Photoshop getting this printed to exactly the right size so that when I, uh, and printed on this onto sticker paper. Um, so that's obviously going to come a little bit later on in the restoration. Now, what I intend to do today um, is to bring this hyena back to its former glory, the way it should have looked when it first came out of the box. I've got a number of tools at my disposal here today. Um, as the restoration goes on, we may come across issues and I might not have everything I need to hand, but, um, but I'm sure I can run away and get the parts I need. So. A toothbrush for cleaning, uh, best thing for getting into all the nooks and crannies um, is an old toothbrush uh, when you're cleaning small toys. Um, some tweezers, uh, I've got a, a box cutter, um, various screwdrivers, I've got some PTFE, ta uh, PTFE tape, um, I'll explain a bit more about that later. Some paint and paint brushes, that will become apparent why I have them as well. Um, some super glue, some scissors, and then I'm gonna bring out the big guns. I've got myself a Dremel with a buffer wheel. So, um, I suppose the first thing, we actually, I'm just gonna show you one more thing before we start, guys. What I also have here that came in the gift box from, from George Aitken is the original Palatoy instructions for the hyena. Um, and this is gonna come in very handy because it shows me on here where all the stickers go. So that's probably gonna be the final part of the restoration. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. Okay, so I think the first thing I need to do is get the camera turned around um, and we're going to get the hyena all washed up. Alright, so the first thing you'll need to do is um, uh, run your hot water till you get it pretty warm. I always like to use uh, warm water when, when cleaning uh, old toys. Now just while that's heating up, that's getting pretty good. Um, now. Usually when I clean vehicles, if possible, I like to strip them down into as many different parts and pieces as possible. That's pretty easy with Star Wars vehicles because they're all screwed together. Uh, you can just unscrew them and take them apart. Not quite so easy with G.I. Joe vehicles because these were kind of designed to be uh, clipped together and not taken apart again. So all I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to, um, I'm going to remove the turret, uh, wash that separately, and I'm going to remove the canopy. Now you'll see inside here, um, inside the cockpit there, that some of those stickers are actually pretty good. The rest of the vehicle's lost nearly all the stickers. We've also got a piece broken off the back here, which I have that piece. Uh, we're going to have to do a, uh, a bit of a repair later on. So, um, so I'm not going to strip it down any further than this. I think that's as much as I need to get this uh, cleaned up for now. Okay, that water's pretty nice and warm now. So, just some uh, some normal dishwashing liquid, quite a bit of it. And then what I also do is put a little bit of the dishwashing liquid onto the, the toothbrush I'm going to use for the cleaning as well. And then just start scrubbing away. Okay, 
Okay, and there we have it. The hyena, all nice and clean. Doesn't take much more than that. You don't want to be using any sort of dangerous chemicals to, uh, to get your toys clean. Just hot soapy water is the best thing. Now, this is going to take um, not too long to dry because it's very, very hot here in Australia today. So I'm going to put this outside, um, outside on my, on my balcony, um, not in direct sunlight, um, but I'm going to put it out uh, in, in the heat. Excuse me for that background noise. I live near a, I live near a school and I think that's uh, the early school bell. Um, yeah, I'm going to set this out to dry and while this is drying, we're going to get to work on something else. So let's go. Okay guys, for the next part of this restoration, um, I actually don't have the driver for the first issue hyena. And the driver for the first issue hyena was actually a UK repaint of um, uh, Destro. So if the camera focuses there. Yeah, so a UK repaint of Destro. Now they called this figure um, Red Jackal. And as you can see, I've got a reference photo here. Um, and in the photo, um, the chest panel is, is full red um, with a white collar. I've actually got three Destro figures in my collection. Two are complete and one is incomplete. So I've decided I'm going to turn my hand at um, trying to make a custom Red Jackal figure. Now, I'm pretty sure that my painting skills are not good enough to fully recreate the skull and crossbones um, exactly. Um, but I'm not too concerned. I am going to have an attempt at it as so long as it looks kind of okay, I'll be alright because this um, this figure is going to be um, sat inside the cockpit of the vehicle underneath the um, underneath the uh, sort of smoke glass canopy so you're not going to be able to see too well. I just kind of want to give it the, um, the effect of having a red jackal. So before I start painting this guy, um, I've decided the best way to do this is actually going to be to disassemble the figure. Um, pretty simple to do with, um, with G.I. Joe figures. Uh, I'll see what his O-ring looks like as well when it's in um, when I get it out and if it's not too it feels okay um, I may replace it though if if needed and There we go Yeah, that O-ring looks uh, that O-ring looks pretty good. So now I've got it all in pieces Okay, all I need to work on is the chest panel so we have the chest panel here. I've got some red modeling paint. Just gonna give it a bit of a shake. And a fine paintbrush. And let's see how we go. That's a pretty good color match, I think. Okay, I'm probably going to give that a second coat in a minute and then we'll come back later on um, and do the, uh, the white collar and have a crack at doing the skull and crossbones. But for now, I'm just going to get, um, get my paintbrush cleaned. Uh, so I'll just use an, an enamel paint for this. Enamel modeling paint thinners. And now we're going to move on to the canopy because um, the, uh, the hyena is still outside drying, so we'll move on to the canopy. Okay guys, in order to clean up the canopy, um, I want to buff all of the scratches out of this with, um, with a Dremel and a buffer wheel. But I'm a little bit scared. I haven't done this before. I've seen uh, videos, other people have done it, and um, my good friend um, and fellow um, one of the patrons of the channel, Joseph, sent me a video on how to do this. Um, but what I've decided is I've actually got a vintage X-Wing cockpit. I don't know if you, can you see the warping in that? This has been left in, in the sun or it's been near some heat and it's pretty badly warped and it's pretty much not displayable. But this is, feels pretty much like the same kind of plastic. So I'm first of all gonna do a test run on this um, X-Wing canopy. Now, on the Dremel, uh, we've got some settings here from uh, 200 RPM, 400, 600, 800, and 1000 RPM. You want to start off with the slowest setting possible. So I'm going to go 
200 RPM, pretty slow. And that looks to be working pretty well. Okay, I'm now confident that I'm not gonna burn or melt any of this. So um, let's get going. Okay, I think I might give this another, might give this a bit of a clean in some soapy water um, and then come back. This has cleaned it up a little bit. Um, no, it doesn't look anywhere near as good as I was kind of hoping for, but um, I don't want to overdo it and do any damage to it. So, okay guys, I didn't worry about turning the camera around to the, uh, to the sink just to see, uh, so you guys can watch me clean this with a toothbrush. But um, after buffing it with the Dremel and giving it a clean with the toothbrush, you can see how nice that canopy has turned out. Uh, I could probably do a little bit more work on it, but I am, I am quite scared of, um, of putting any melt marks on the, uh, the plastic. This is good enough for me. That looks really, really cool. Um, so now we've got that done, um, I'm probably gonna give um, my custom Red Jackal another coat of red paint. Uh, I won't show you guys that, you saw me paint it once already. Uh, I'll give it another coat of red paint and then we're gonna move on to the main body of the hyena. Okay, so the hyena was actually only outside for about about 15 minutes, 20 minutes or so. Uh, no, no, maybe half an hour, I can't really tell, I've been busy. Um, yeah, the hyena's not been outside for very long, but as I said, it's very warm here in Australia and this has dried out really, really quickly. Now you'll see there are a couple of original stickers left. I want to keep as many of the original stickers as possible, so I won't be replacing any of the ones in the, um, in the cockpit. Uh, however, this one here, this is where we're going to have to do a bit of a glue repair to fix this piece back on. And what I want to do is once it's glued back on, is actually use one of the replacement stickers that I've made um, to sort of reinforce the joint. So first of all, I'm going to get these old stickers removed. Um, I'm going to have a go with some tweezers here, see if I can pick out the edge. I'm not sure how well these are stuck on, but actually that's coming away pretty easy. Wow, that was way easier than I thought it was going to be. So get the other side. Easy done, and now we've just got to take the, uh, the sticker off this final piece that needs to be repaired. Oh man, I can't believe how easy they came off. I thought they'd be, there's no sticky residue left behind. Um, and they've been on there since, what, 1983. They've been on there a long, long time, 35 odd years, maybe more, I'm, my math's not great. Okay, there's a few cracks in the back of this as well. I'm gonna to have to be cautious of this after I finish the restoration if I ever want to um, stick figures on these back, um, these back peg, uh, foot pegs here, because um, I may make this crack again. Um, but that actually, that, that sits in there pretty nice and tight when it's in place. So I'm just gonna apply a bit of glue. Now I use, um, I use a Loctite glue. Um, I'm not sure exactly what model of Loctite it is, I don't remember. Uh, but this is actually something I use at work for gluing together rubber O-rings. This is actually excellent for like Action Man's rubber webbing and some of like the rubber belts and stuff from, uh, from Rambo Toys. This glues rubber together. Uh, and really, um, once you glue rubber with this, it, it never ever comes apart. If you do use this Loctite, please be very, very careful. This stuff will glue your fingers together and you'll have a very hard time getting them apart again. So um, I'm, I'm doing this on, an, on, a, on an old towel, so if I do drop some glue on the towel or, or maybe some red paint from, from my attempt at a Red Jackal, which is actually coming up pretty nicely. Let me just show you guys the uh, the torso there. So that red's looking pretty good. All we've got to do now is get the, uh, the white collar and uh, have a crack at doing the skull and crossbow, but we'll do that after. Uh, yes, yeah, so if I get any paint or, or glue on this towel, I'm not too concerned. I'm just going to throw it out afterwards. So all I want to do is get some of this glue um, onto the, the join. Now 
I have glued my fingers together before with this stuff and it can be very painful trying to get your fingers pulled apart. Be very careful. But I'll take the risk for you guys. Now the other thing with this glue as well is it, um, it actually dries pretty quickly. And where we've got a couple of other cracks, uh, all I'm gonna do is just run a little bit of glue over the top of the crack and it should hopefully seal it up a little bit. It might look a little unsightly, um, but I don't think too many people are gonna look too closely at the back of this. Now, there can be a temptation with this glue to try and wipe it down with a tissue or something. I recommend not doing that because it will just, the parts of the tissue will stick to it and then you'll have some, uh, some unsightly um, white tissue stuck to the back of your restored vehicle. So, um, all right, so I'm gonna leave that to dry for a moment. Okay, now, as I said, while that's drying, um, let's assemble the turret. Um, so the guns basically drop in here and this piece just, just clips in. That's how it was um, assembled when we were kids. The problem is, um, I had a little bit of a go at this last night and the guns are really, really loose. So I t I'm gonna use a hot tip from, um, from Toy Poloi, who uses this on, um, uh, on loose action figure joints. That's what the PTFE tape is for. So I'm gonna get a couple of pieces of PTFE tape. That off. Don't want that. That is a little bit dirty. Now this is this is white, so it it might stand out a little bit, but it's going to get most of it's going to get hidden. Um, I'm going to cut off a strip, maybe like that. And what we're going to do is wrap it around the area that is supposed to be clamped in the turret, uh, and it's just basically going to increase the um, the, uh, well, what's the word I'm looking for? It's going to increase the, um, the diameter thickness of this part. Um, so it should clamp in and hold pretty well. So now I'll just cut off another bit for the other side. Uh, that was probably a little bit too long what I had there. I don't need quite so much. Um, for those of you who don't know what PTFE tape, it's just what plumbers use for um, sealing up threads on um, taps and water pipes and stuff like that can be picked up fairly cheaply in your in your hardware store and now we've got the PTFE wrapped around there um, might look a little unsightly now but it, don't forget it's going to get hidden inside the turret so we might see a little bit of the white edge but I'm not too concerned about that it actually might give it a little bit of extra color. Uh, again, um, as I said, I did want to keep as many of the original stickers as possible, but when I looked at the sticker sheet, this sticker has actually um, now been cut because when the piece eventually sits in here, the sticker's actually supposed to go um, right up to the top of the sort of gunner's control panel there. Um, so I'm gonna remove this and we'll put on one full sticker when we're done, if I can get this one off. This one's not coming off as easy as the ones on the uh, the tail section of the hyena. Okay, now I've got it now. Now she's coming off. There we go. Okay, so now we're just going to um, are we going to get this clipped together now? Yeah, we'll get this clipped together now. There are some stickers that need to go in inside the turret a little bit later, but so I'm just going to situate the. Uh, the gun's in there, and then what you'll need to do is turn this over when you're trying to get the, it clipped in. It's quite fragile, I don't want to break it. There we go. Okay, now those guns actually you can angle them down, angle them up, and they don't 
flop around all loose. That's much, much better. Much better. Okay, now we are pretty much onto the stickers. I've got the sticker sheet here. Anybody who would like a copy of this, um, I've got it in a, um, I've saved it into a PDF format. Um, anyone who would like a copy of these stickers, feel free to email me at torturedgeniusfilms at gmail.com or message me on our Facebook page. Um, and I'm more than happy to send you the PDF copy of, um, of these and then you just need your own sticker paper and a printer to, to print them out. Um, now, it's gonna take me quite a while to cut out all of these um, all of these stickers I'm going to be sitting here with a pair of scissors for quite some time and I think that's going to be quite boring for you guys I'm sure you all know how to use a pair of scissors um, so I'm actually going to turn the camera off sit down at the table we'll spend a little bit of time getting all the stickers cut out um, and then we'll turn the camera back on and start applying the stickers to the hyena okay guys I've changed my mind and decided uh, to leave the stickers for last because that's basically going to finish off uh, the vehicle. So before I get onto that, let's have um, let's have a crack at doing the white parts of my Red Jackal custom figure. Uh, I'm going to need to concentrate very very hard here. I have my um, I have my reference photo here of uh, of the Red Jackal. So um, probably going to be a time lapse video because I'm not going to do any commentary. I need to concentrate. Okay, I'm certainly not an expert painter. Um, up close, I'm not even going to show you up close, I'm a little bit embarrassed, it doesn't look all that great. Um, we're going to leave that to dry, um, and certainly when it's hidden behind a um, when it's hidden behind a cockpit like that, you're not really going to know. And the good thing is, um, certainly no one's ever going to try and pass this off as original because you can tell it's just a, uh, a pretty dodgy handmade job. But um, it's good enough for me. It's going to look good inside the cockpit. All right, guys, the last part of the restoration. There are a lot of stickers here. This is going to take me some time. As a matter of fact, it took me probably more than half an hour um, just, to, um, just to cut them all out. So uh, I, I, I was really wishing for the days of old when I actually got these as a kid on a sticker sheet and it was all die cut. Um, it was time consuming back then just putting the stickers on, but having to cut them out individually was very difficult. So as I said, I've got um, an original sticker sheet, uh, an instruction sheet here that George sent me, and it's got the instructions of where all of the stickers go. So I'm gonna follow these instructions very carefully um, and get these stickers applied. Um, I'm gonna go for a time-lapse video again, but I think just quickly, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna build Red Jackal because his paint's dry now, he's ready to go and let's see what he looks like when he's assembled. All the parts together. Okay, far from perfect, but that is uh, not a bad looking substitute for Red Jackal. Uh, and when he's in the cockpit, it's gonna look not too bad, I think. Okay, all right, let's go for a time lapse and let's get these stickers put on.
guys and there we have it the hyena is now restored we've just got to put the pieces together as I said I'm going to get the uh, get red jackal in the cockpit there hmm he doesn't want to sit hmm Okay, maybe Red Jackal won't go in the cockpit because he doesn't seem to fit. Uh, last thing, so when they're when you're putting the turret in, there's a couple of clips here. You have to actually put it in with the turret facing backwards, where it fits into these uh, slots here. Drops in there, spins around. So let's get. And there we have it. So there you go guys, um, I really, really enjoyed this restoration. Um, it was quite time consuming, I needed to be a little bit patient and there was a few sort of challenging things in there, but I would like to sincerely thank uh, George Aitken for actually uh, gifting this hyena to me. Um, and I'm just really, really pleased with the way it turned out. You know, we started off with a, a quite dirty, slightly broken toy, missing stickers, missing a few parts and we've been able to just breathe new life into an incredible piece of Action Force history and a piece of, uh, I suppose, G.I. Joe history as well, being, you know, a UK recolor of a classic Cobra vehicle, uh, the His Tank. So thank you all for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this. And if you've got a hyena uh, that needs to be restored, I kind of hope some of the uh, things that we showed you today can, um, can help you get it repaired back to its former glory and display worthy. So um one last announcement so i've been on a bit of a buying spree lately with action force stuff i've got a lot of action force videos planned the first one of which is going to be a full review of the red shadows i now have like 95 well i've purchased about 95 percent of the collection between what i've already got and a few items that are arriving in the post um I, I'm probably never going to get the entire line, but I have enough now to do a full review of the Action Force Red Shadows. I don't believe that video will drop before Christmas, um, so that I'm waiting, still waiting for a few items to arrive, and then I've got to get the script written. But that probably be one of the first feature videos that you see in 2020. All right, I hope you're having a great week, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Mm -hmm.